So in this section, 11.1, .1, and also in 11.2, we're going to look at techniques that we can use when we're solving for triangles that are not right triangles. So prior to this point, we've been only using right triangles, meaning that we can use the trig relationships from SOHCAHTOA, that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, and so on. However, that's only true in a right triangle. If you don't have a right triangle, you can't talk about opposite over hypotenuse because there's no hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always a side across from a right angle or a 90 degree angle. So if we're going to solve triangles that are not right triangles, we need a different technique besides SOHCAHTOA. And also keep in mind that we also cannot use the Pythagorean uh, formula that says a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, because that, again, only applies to right triangles. In 11.1, .1, we're going to introduce the law of sines. Now, the law of sines is based on the idea of similar triangles where you compare the ratio of angles and sides. So if you look at these two bullets at the very top of the page, we're solving for non-right triangles. However, the law of sines will work for any triangle, including the right triangles. But if you have a right triangle, it's easiest to just use what we had before. However, it does not work in all cases. So we're going to look in this section on the cases where you can use the law of sines. And then the cases where you cannot use law of sines, we'll cover that in our next section with law of cosines. So we use it most often when we have two angles and one side. So for any triangle, we have these relationships here. That the side A over sine of angle A, so we have the side and its corresponding angle, that's going to be equal to side B over sine of B and that in turn is equal to side C over sine of C. So if you're trying to f solve for a side, you would use this relationship where the side is on the top. It just is easier algebraically. However, if you're trying to find an angle, you would use uh, one of two actually, because you're gonna put two together and make an equation of the other uh, formula where you have the sine of A over side A, sine of B over side B, sine of C over side C. So again, just your tip, try to set up your ratios so that the unknown variable is in the numerator or in the top. So the best case for using law of sines is where you have a side, an angle, and an angle, which we call SAA. It's easier to see when you look in example one. Now, if I went clockwise or counterclockwise around my triangle. And here I'll start with the side 15. Then I have a side, keep going, I have an angle, and I have an angle. So that's a side angle angle, and that's perfect for law of sines. Because uh, once you have two angles, remember the sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. So I can easily find angle A by simply taking 180 degrees and subtracting the other two angles, the 45 and the 70. So that would give me that A is equal to 65 degrees. So I have all the angles. I have side B, that would be the 15. I don't have C and I don't have side A. So remember the side corresponds to the angle opposite. Uh, why don't I find side A first? So I'm going to put A on the top because that's what I'm trying to find. And it's got to be over sine of A. Sine of A is sine of 65 degrees. That's going to be equal to, and I have angle B and side B. So that's what I'm going to put next is our side B, which is 15 over angle B, which would be the sine of 70 degrees. Now I'm going to get the A by itself by multiplying both sides by sine of 65 degrees to get A equal to 15 times sine of 65 degrees 
over sine of 70 degrees. And at this point, it's just a calculator problem. Just be really careful how you enter in these values into a calculator. You should get that A is approximately 14.467.08903. So this is what showed up on my calculator when I plugged it in. And then I'm going to label that on my triangle. Uh, the directions say to round the final answer to one decimal place, so 14.5. And I'm going to pause and just take a look at this. Uh, let's see. Angle B is the largest angle, and it corresponds to a side of 15. Angle A is really close to B, but it's a little bit smaller. And look at side A, it's a little bit smaller than side B. So, so far the angles and the sides are corresponding. So just remember, you always want to kind of look at that. That's your little check. Largest angle corresponds to largest side. Smallest angle, smallest side. Medium corresponds to medium. So I still need to find side C. So, oops, I don't know why I said side C and I wrote A. <laughs> so we're going to put C over angle C. Sine of angle C was 45 degrees. I don't even need my calculator for that because I know it's square root 2 over 2. However, uh, I'm also going to compare this to B because that was given values. I know at least those are correct. So 15 over sine of 70 degrees. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you have to use... Uh, values that you may have rounded. Getting the C by itself, I would multiply both sides by sine of 45 degrees. 15 sine of 45 degrees over, my pen's doing some funky stuff, sine of 70 degrees. And then again, putting that in my calculator very carefully, I get approximately 11.2 eight seven three zero nine seven nine so we are rounding these values to one decimal place that would be eleven point three um so here i just wanted to point something out and i also wanted to specifically write down the answers that i found <laughs> You always want to go back and look at your triangle, always. And see that the value, if the values that you got make sense. Meaning compare sides and angles. And because it's very easy at this point, since this relies so heavily on a calculator, for there to be a calculator error. So going back, largest angle is B, largest side is side B. The medium would be A which corresponds to a medium side or a middle side. C is 45 degrees smallest angle, and it also corresponds to the smallest side. So these solutions, although I'm not guaranteed they're co completely correct, they make sense. Okay, so always double check, make sure your answers make sense. The next type of problem we're gonna look at is if you have an angle, a side, and an angle, or ASA. In this uh, example two triangle, I have, we'll start at C, angle C. So I have an angle C, I have a side A, and I have an angle B. So I have angle side angle. Let me go ahead and label all the pieces. So across from C is side C. Across from angle A is side A. Across from angle B is side B. Since I have two angles, I can easily find angle A by what we did prior, subtracting from 180 degrees. And when I do this subtraction, I have A is equal to 74 degrees. So I got A, and then I'm also gonna fill this in on my triangle, just because it's easier for me to go back and just look at the triangle and see if all my answers make sense. 
Uh, so maybe I'm going to find side B, which would be B over sine of angle B with 24 degrees. And it looks like B is going to be the smallest angle, so side B should be the smallest side. That's going to be equal to, I'm going to use angle A and side A. So 11 over sine of 74 degrees. Multiply both sides by sine of 24 degrees to get B by itself. Over sine 74 degrees. Again, at this point, I would just put this in a calculator carefully to get 4.6544060694. Uh, and it didn't say what to round to, so might as well just round it to one decimal place, like, like the prior example, maybe 4.7. Okay, and again, I'm going to put this in here on the triangle as well, just because it gives me something visual to look at. So far, the answers make sense. B is the smallest angle, and so far, it's corresponding to the smallest side. So let's see what C is. C is the largest angle, so when I find side C, it should be larger than 11, which is A. We have C over sine of 82 degrees is equal to, again, I'm going to use the 11 over sine of 74 degrees. I'm going to use A. Multiply by sine of 82 on both sides to get the C by itself. 11 sine of 82 degrees over sine of 74 degrees. Putting that in a calculator. Uh, let's see, 11.3192845. So I'll go one decimal place and get C as approximately 11.3. Um, will that make sense with my picture? Uh, yes, it's a little bit larger than A, uh, but the answer does make sense. Largest angle corresponds to largest side, smallest to smallest, medium to medium. Let's look at an application problem. I don't know if you're familiar with the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. It leans at an angle of about 84.7 degrees. Uh, so if you're looking at standing maybe 171 feet away, so look at this along the ground. If you're 171 feet away from the base of the tower, then the site, the angle of elevation to the top is 50 degrees. So we're going to use this information to find the distance from the base of the tower to the top of the tower. So that would be this distance B. Now 84.7, that's very close to 90 degrees, but not close enough for us to use everything that we had from right triangles. We're going to try to use the law of sines. Now the law of sines, remember what we're doing is we're going, and here we're finding a side, we're trying to find B. So we're doing B over B is equal to, and now I have a problem, because although I have angle A, 84.7, I don't have side A. And although I have side C, I don't have angle C. So I do have angle B and side B. Well, I'm trying to find side B. And I want to compare it to an angle and a side where I have both values. Now, it seems easier to find angle C. I don't know how I'm going to find side A right now. But angle C is easy to find because all we're doing is subtracting the other two angles from 180 degrees. Angle C is 
And then when we do this subtraction, I have C is 45.3 degrees. Okay, so that would be my angle C. And now I have angle C side C. I'm trying to find B. So that's going to go over sine of angle B, which is 50 degrees. And it's going to be equal to the 171, that side C, over angle C, which was 40, oops, sine, sorry, of 45.3 degrees. Again, solving for B, we would multiply both sides by sine of 50. And then we're going to put this expression in our calculator and see if the answer makes sense. So we have approximately 184.2905131. Uh, let's see if there's, oh, round to the nearest tenth. So the nearest tenth is one decimal place. A 184.3 feet. Let's see, does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. Because angle C is 45.3 degrees, that would be the smallest angle. It's going to correspond to the smallest side. So it does correspond to 171. But look at B. We just found B to be about 184.3. That makes sense. It's a little bit, the angle is a little bit larger and the side is a little bit larger. Now I could find side A, but it's not part of the question. So I'm gonna stop here. This is a word problem. So we could just say the distance from the base to the top or just the distance is about 184.3 feet. Okay, so this formula, this law of signs, it actually works out pretty nicely in most cases. However, let's say we have side, side, angle, as we do here, or SSA. Unfortunately, there's going to be four different options and we can have zero, one, or two solutions. So it's possible that there is no solution. Now, although we don't really use the height when we're doing our computations, um, it's the way that we define uh, how many solutions we have. So if you look at this first case where let's say we have, so again, remember what we're looking at. We're looking at having a side and that would be our A another side that would be our side b and an angle and that would be angle a what we don't have is the angle between a and b so since we don't have that angle think about it it's possible for a to kind of swing around and go anywhere in this first case we're looking at what happens when that side a is less than the height of the triangle in that case it doesn't matter what angle is between a and b there's no way for that side A to touch the bottom part or the bottom side or the base of our triangle. So in that case, there's going to be no solution. In the case where the height and that side A are equal, we actually have one solution. We have a right triangle. So here's the interesting cases. Let's say that side A is between the height and the base, or side B. So it's bigger than the height, but it's smaller than side B. Look at this diagram here. We have our side A. We have our side B. A is larger than H, but smaller than B. So it could happen. Remember, we don't have the angle between side A and B. It could happen that we have something like this first picture. 
but we could also have this triangle here if we swing side A in. That would still have the same side A, B, and angle A. So in this case, there's two solutions. One where the angle between your side A and B is obtuse or larger than 90 degrees, and this other case where it's less than 90 degrees. The last case would be if the side A is larger than or equal to side B, our last diagram here. So notice we have this A in the diagram. It's in this case larger than side B, and we don't even care about the height here. What we see is that we have this really large obtuse angle between side A and side B. If that's the case, then you're just going to have one solution. So let's look at an example. Example four, we want to solve the triangle ABC. We have side A, side B, and angle A. What I like to do is I like to do a quick sketch. Put in some generic triangle, just so I can get an idea of what things look like. So here I have some A, B, C. I have side A at five. I have B is seven. And I have angle A is 100 degrees. Okay, I'm looking at this and I see no solution. So how do I see no solution so quickly? Well, look at angle A, it's 100 degrees. Remember the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So that means I have 80 degrees left over to split between angle B and angle C. A is the largest angle, but look at the sides. Angle A corresponds to a side of five. Angle B, I don't know what it is, but I know it's smaller than A. So that means that side B should be smaller than five, but it's not, it's seven. So this is the first case where side A is too small to connect and I have no solution. Now, maybe you didn't notice that, which is fine. Then what you would do is you would go ahead and you would try to solve. We have angle A and side A, so it seems reasonable that we're going to compare that to, let's say that we want to find angle B because we have side B. So if I wanted to find angle B, it would be, I'm going to put the sine of B on top over side B, which is seven. And I'm gonna use A, so it's gonna be sine of 100 degrees over five. We'll get sine B by itself by multiplying everything by seven. I have sine of B is equal to seven sine of 100 degrees over five. And now if I were to put this in a calculator, I will have sine of B is approximately equal to, uh, let's see what I get, 1.37, and I can stop right there and see that there's no solution. Uh, 8, 7, 3, 0, 8, 5, 4. But I'll write the whole thing in my calculator. Because remember the sine function, it will only give us values between negative one and one. It won't give us anything larger than one. But this says sine is approximately 1.3, seven, eight, and so on. That can't happen. So at this point, you might say, oh, well, that can't happen. There's no solution. But let's say that you don't notice it and you're on autopilot. Well, to solve for B, you would use sine inverse. And you would have B is equal to sine inverse. Oops, well, that's not going to help. <laughs> Making my own abbreviations. Um, I'll put the approximation in here. 
So when you put that in your calculator to get your angle B, you'll get an error. And this is where you should stop and say, oh, no angle exists, which means no solution. So at any time when there's no solution, you notice that things aren't working out, you can just stop and say no solution. You don't ha have to go all the way down till you get an error in your calculator. So that was the case where there's no solution. Again, you could have an obtuse angle and have one solution or a right angle and have one solution. But let's look at this case here in example five where we're going to solve the triangle ABC. We have sides A and B and we have angle A. So again, I'm gonna just sketch a triangle so I can get an idea of what I'm looking at. And <laughs> this is such a sad triangle. Uh, let's see, we have side A is five, side B is eight, and angle A is 30 degrees. So this would be a side side angle. Uh, I can't find angle B or angle C as I did prior. When I had two angles, it was very simple for me to find the missing third angle because I would subtract by 180. Uh, from 180. But here I have two missing angles. Hmm. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is maybe find angle B, because I have side B, by comparing it to angle A over side A. So if I'm going to find angle B, I'm going to be solving for sine of B over 8 equal to sine of A is 30 degrees over side A. And the reason why I picked A is because I have both the angle and the side. Remember when you set up these proportions, which is just a fraction equal to a fraction, you wanna make sure you only have one unknown value because then you can solve. If you have more than one unknown value, you can't solve the equation. So I'm multiplying by eight on both sides to get the sine of B by itself. I have eight times sine of 30 degrees over five. Now, when I put that in my calculator, it's not even an approximation, it's exactly 0.8. Probably because sine of 30 is half uh, times eight would be four over five, so 0.8. But remember, we want B, not sine of B. So we use sine inverse. To have B equal to sine inverse of 0 0.8. And that is going to give me an approximation of 53.1301.0235. And that's degrees. And here is where we get the ambiguous case. Going back into the line above, where we have sine of B is equal to 0.8, we're saying sine is equal to some positive number. Remember, sine is positive in quadrants one and two. And we're looking at angle measures of a triangle. They can measure anything from zero to 180 degrees, which is exactly quadrants one and two. So sine of B could give you an angle B in quadrant one, and you can also get an angle in quadrant two. If you're using your calculator with the sine inverse, it's only gonna give you that angle in quadrant one. So let's just go ahead and sketch that. It's about 53 degrees. So here, this is what I'm talking about. What we did is we found this 53 degrees. But that's not the only solution because we're looking at sine positive. So we're also going to have some angle between 90 and 180 degrees in quadrant two that could also be a possibility. So our calculator only gave us the value in quadrant one. However, there is that other possibility that B is equal to, so how would I find this angle here? Well, all the way around would be 180 degrees. 
So if you take 180 degrees and you subtract that 53.130, so if you are going to put this in a calculator, uh, do the whole long one. Or you can just minus the sign inverse in your calculator of 0.8. I get that that is 126.869876. So at this point, you have your first possible solution. I'm going to call that one. And then you find your second possible angle. At this point, I got a positive about 127 degrees which is a reasonable angle because it's a triangle. I can have any angle between zero and 180 degrees. So 127 degrees will work. So these are my two possibilities or my two solutions for this triangle. And we'll look at them both separately. Let's start with number one. We'll look at our angle B um, being I don't want it to be red, sorry. <laughs> we'll look at our angle B being 53. And we'll just round it to the nearest whole number or nearest degree. So in my triangle, going back to here, I had A, angle A. I now have angle B. To get angle C, I simply have to subtract A and B from 180 degrees. So my angle C is going to be about 180 minus the 53, and then minus A was 30 degrees. So our angle C is going to be 97. So it looks like in this case, C might be my largest angle. Let me go back. Does that make sense so far? I have 30 plus 53 plus 97, is that 180? Yes. Now when I look at the angles, I see that angle A is the smallest. So far, side A is the smallest. B is the middle angle. And so far, it could be the middle angle, or middle side of eight. So when I find side C, it's gotta be larger than eight since C is the largest angle. And if these values make sense, then this is one possible triangle that will solve this problem. So I'm going to go back to my law of sines. I'm finding side C, so it has to go over sine of C. And typically I would use the long decimal, but I'm going to be lazy and just use the 97 degrees. I'll compare it to uh, a, so 5 over sine of 30. So our side C is going to be equal to 5 times sine of 97 degrees over sine of 30 degrees. When I put that in a calculator, so remember, in order for this problem to make sense, this has to be bigger than 8. And I get 9.92546 So side C is approximately 10. And that answer makes sense. Now let's look at the other possibility for our angle B. This would be this second one which is about 127 degrees. Okay, so let's find C. So C is gonna be about 180 degrees minus 127 degrees minus the 30 degrees. In this case, I get 23. Now at this point, you'll be able to tell if you have a solution or not. If when you subtract angles A and B from 180 degrees, if you get C is zero or C is negative, 
then you only have one solution because that's impossible. Okay. In this case, we have C is equal to a positive 23 degrees. So that is possible. We could have a triangle with an angle of 127, an angle of 23, and an angle of 30. So going back, remember that diagram when we had the, those two possibilities. Let me now find side of C, which would be C is equal to sine of 23 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and keep using A because those values were given to me. 5 over sine of 30 degrees. C is going to be equal to 5 times sine of 23 degrees over sine of 30 degrees. In a calculator, I have C is approximately equal to 3.9. 0731128 so c is roughly 4 let's just double check and make sure those values make sense so if c is 23 degrees and i'm looking at this triangle that i started out with then it would be the smallest angle and if its side is about 4 it's also the smallest side uh, a is 30 degrees. So A and C are kind of close in value. A is a little bit bigger and side A is a little bit bigger as well. So there's always this idea of answers that make sense. And then our largest angle B corresponds with the largest side. So we actually have two solutions or two triangles that can solve this problem. I think that's the most difficult case. <laughs> So we haven't talked about having a side angle side or side 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 and no angles. These are cases that we're actually going to solve in our next section when we talk about the law of cosines. So let's go ahead and see why it doesn't work. If I look at this first triangle, ABC, I have my angle B. I don't have side B. Um, and then I have side A, I have side C. This would be the case where I have a side, an angle, and a side. Now, if I was going to use a law of sines to see if I can solve this, I need to set something up where I only have one thing that I don't know, but I have a problem. I have side A, but I don't have angle A. I have side C, but I don't have angle C. I have angle B, but I don't have side B. So it doesn't matter how you set things up. Let's just say I wanted to find side B. It doesn't matter how I set this up. I'm not going to be able to solve it. Uh, let's say that I'm going to compare it to A. 15 over sine of A. So you see the problem is I have one equation, but I have two values, b and sine of a, that I don't know. So I can't solve this equation. Now, if I were to instead use c, I would run into the same problem. I would have that this is equal to 20 over sine of c. I don't have b, and I don't have c, can't solve. Or if I was going to look at 15 over sine A, 20 over sine C, again, two things I don't know. So I can't use law of sines for this type of triangle where I have a side angle side. That we're going to try to solve with law of cosines in the next section. So what happens if we have three sides? No angles. Well, same problem. Let's say I wanted to find angle A. So I'm going to have sine of A equal to side A, that would be this 7 here. And that's going to be, okay, so what angle am I going to use to compare it to? I don't have C or B. If I put in sine of B, I do have side B, which is the 8. But I have two unknowns. I can't solve this. 
And we'll run into the same problem if we decide we're going to use sine of c over 2. Two unknowns, one equation, can't solve. Uh, so that's it for this section. In the next section, we'll look at these two cases and use law of cosines.